homebrewers! Welcome! It feels like it's been quite a while since I've done a video. So, uh, basically, to get you caught up, my computer died. The last video I did for YouTube was the last video, or the last time the computer was working. It has gone to the scrapyard in the sky. Oh well, but we've got a new computer, so uh, we've pretty much got everything now. New camera, new computer, even a microphone. Wow! feel like all professional. So we're going to kick things off with a cheeky bottling video of this, the simple and cheap Blackberry wine. So if you haven't seen the part one video, the link's up there so you can see it. So uh, let's, let's just jump right in. We started this in January. Now it was cold in January, so we had a few technical issues. Some people will say it was a stuck fermentation. It's not. It was a dormant fermentation. It was too cold for the yeast. Now I could have easily sorted that by changing my yeast to one that ferments in low temperatures, like the Sultanine yeast that I have. But I wanted to use a general purpose wine yeast because it's easy and you don't have to think about it. So I did. And uh, yeah, fermentation has been really slow, but it's done. So uh, let's take a look. Oh, ho, 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 ho. it is looking beautiful. It smells pretty good, actually. Um, it has that blackberry and kind of a little bit of a red wine hint. That's because of the uh, wine concentrate. Oh, but the proof is in the pudding. So what I've got, because my hydrometer will not fit in the bucket to take a reading, I've sterilized the container it comes in because, you know, I'm cheap like that. And I got my hydrometer, so uh, let's go in. Now I am expecting it to be a full fermentation, even though it had stopped and gone dormant. Um, it just took longer. That's pretty much it. That's why I really like sterilizing with my bleach, boiling water, dish soap, you know, all of those things instead of a sanitizer. Because, uh, yeah, that's just why. So let's take a look at this beautiful baby oh yes so instantly it is at 990 i mean look at that it's got a beautiful color this bit is for me because i can and why not now that's just going to go horribly wrong so let's just pour that into a glass it stains so that's pretty cool so i'll get to that bit in a minute so we're going to go ahead and bottle this up because well we need some bottles we need wine so I have sterilized six bottles because there's going to be a gallon's worth of booze in there and then there's going to be a load of on the pulpy guff at the bottom. We don't want that in our wine. Uh, you can filter it off, but you get less flavor. Uh, some people like to transfer it, but one and done. That's what we do here. Nice, easy and cheap. So I'm just going to set up my bottles for my siphoning. So I've got my sterilized siphoning tube, which has been filled with water, oh yes, uh, to create a simple and easy auto siphon uh, without all the extra bits. And it cost me the price of a cheap pipe, so no, less than a pound. So uh, got my piece of silver. Now you don't have to use silver. Uh, this just makes it easier. You could use a slither of bamboo or a chopstick, a uh, piece of stainless steel, or none at all. You don't need it. It's just I'm lazy. So in that goes. Brewing peg. Because, uh, you know, better than using both hands. And now I'm just going to open this up and untangle it. I always do that. So now when I lower it, you will see I didn't need to do anything. It's created its own siphon. So I'm going to go ahead and bottle these up. I'll see you in a bit. So we're back. Bottling has been completed. Now, I forgot to mention when I was uh, taking the hydrometer reading, it went down to 990. So uh, that means our wine is 11%. Oh, beautiful, suits you. So we got a full fermentation. It is looking really beautiful. My worktop is stained with what looks like red wine. I mean, it is actually stained the worktop. Fortunately, bleach sorts that problem out. So we got six bottles. I could have got probably another bottle, bottle and a half from the uh, dregs inside. But those bits, those last sort of little bit, would have been yeasty and would have had bits in it. 
And we don't want that. We don't want bits in our wine. We don't want it to be extra yeasty. If that's your thing, you can go ahead and do it. But we set out for a gallon. We got our gallon. Now, I have some wine right here. Looking, looking pretty. <laughs> oh yeah, it looks good. It has a beautiful dark, rich red color. I mean, because these ones look black. So a little bit in a glass. Now it is a dry wine and it's gonna need aging. I'm expecting this to be tannic and acidic because, well, that's basically what dry stuff tastes like before it's been aged. So it has a really nice smell to it. I will say it has those berry and red wine aromas, but um, I'm taking one for the team. Cheers. Oh yeah, that has is tannic and acidic. I can feel the acids in there. That's gonna be, oh, and now the tannin. Woo! It is gonna be a really nice wine once it's aged. Uh, Cause we made this, so it's ready for Christmas. Cause you know, Christmas wine. Everyone loves blackberry wine. Now I'm gonna do an extra step. You don't need to do it. And I'm only gonna do it in three of the six bottles. I've got three bottles that have random, you know, just random caps in it. And another three over here all with black caps, so I definitely can't make a mistake on what I'm doing. What I'm gonna be doing is adding in some oak chips. Oh yes. So these particular oak chips are white American oak. And I've got an extra step, and uh, these are actually old bourbon barrels. They've had whiskey in them, and uh, well, they should be pretty good. Now I actually went on the old flea bay to buy these. Oh, but they do have that sort of vanilla caramel whiskey edge. They smell really good. Now I've chosen old bourbon barrels, you know, old barrels, because they've already had whiskey in there. It's gonna give it a little bit more flavor and depth. And because these have already been used, a lot of the tannin has disappeared from here. So we're just gonna get some of the flavors without the extra tannin. I'm, I'm not a great fan of too much tannin because that means you'll have to age them for even longer. We don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I've got a teaspoon and I'm going to use about half a teaspoon because you know, it's easy. I don't have to weigh it out and pop them in. It even has uh, destructions on the sides. So, you know, four to six grams per liter of, uh, well, this is for adding to vodkas and things like that. But half a teaspoon inside uh, some wine going to be about two grams. I'll be fine, just a, a light bit of mellowing, so that's about half a teaspoon's worth of medium toasted oak chips. And there you go. We'll just have to filter the wine through your teeth when you come to drink it. But if it tastes good, who cares? So in we go with another half a teaspoon-ish. In you go. And the last bottle of wine. Half a teaspoon-ish. Now, usually I would say to degas this wine, but because I was waiting on my computer, this has actually been sitting for about seven days. Um, usually I like to get it off as soon as possible, but most of the degassing has already been done. What little CO2 that's left in here, it will just age nicely and keep it preserved. Looking good, so there we go. So this is the oak stuff, and we'll see how this tastes at Christmas. This is the un-oak stuff. And again, we're gonna see what this tastes like at Christmas. So it is really good to be back, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's giving you some ideas for, you know, making some wine, maybe adding some oak to your wine. Woo! Since we've got to wait till Christmas anyway, this should be beautiful. Maybe, I don't know. I've never used bourbon barrels, chips in a wine before. So, bit of a guess. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well, subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna drink that. <laughs> See you later.